All right, so let, let's talk a little bit about Baylor because they came into this game as arguably the hottest team of the Big 12. They had won nine of their last, I'm sorry, 10 of their last 11. And the two losses that they took, the last two losses when they lost their first three in Big 12 yeah. play were both on last second shots, one possession games. Um, they looked unbelievable for 20 minutes. And it yeah. all fell apart in the second half. Where do you stand on Baylor? Was this just, I mean, Kansas in the fog? This is what they happens. gave up eighty-seven points, though. The defense, mm-hmm. the defense. That that's what scares me about Baylor. They can score with just about anybody. Well, they got three guys that can score with just about anybody. And again, I've said it. I'll say it again. Like that that trio, perimeter trio, of of Flagler, Cryer, and and Keontae George is as good as any in the country. I'm not taking anyone over those three. It's the other guys. And, like, I love everyday John, but, like, he's not what he was, and he's probably not going to be what he was until next season. He's never going to get to that level of explosion. He may not because he had such – I mean, it was such a brutal injury, tearing everything in his knee, Mm -hmm. and he's all about explosiveness. They didn't know if he was going to walk again. Right. It was that bad. It was that bad. Literally, this happened a year and, like, eight days ago yeah. and he is back playing like uh, it, it shouldn't be he played 25 minutes mm-hmm. he played 25 minutes so you know again Jalen Bridges he gave him six points four rebounds Caleb Lohner played five minutes mm-hmm. played five minutes what have I said all year the four man is going to determine how far Baylor goes mm-hmm. they've been mediocre those two I know Bridges has been Bridges, better he's, he's gotten been, better he's been, he's been yes. better but it's not I expected more How's that? Going into the year, I expected more from Yeah, that's probably fair. I think there's also probably a reason that he's not at West Virginia anymore because if he right. made right. sense, yep. he's the right fit there. Um, I'm never going to write him off, but they are, no. to me, Baylor is in the same conversation as teams like Miami, as teams like Marquette, and as teams like Xavier that are going to end up being a top three or four seed. Yep. Well, that can be anybody in the country on a good night. Right. It wouldn't shock play. you if they if they go to the final four. Right, it wouldn't rank those shock four. Rank you. those four. Because those are the four teams that it? are elite Miami. They can't really go. Miami, Marquette, Miami, Baylor. Marquette, Baylor, and Xavier. I'm going to have great guards. All can score like hell. Yeah. Entertaining to watch. Yeah. Can't I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go. Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, I'm going to go Baylor one. I'm going to go Miami two. I'm going to go Xavier three and Marquette four. The only switch I would have is I'd have Marquette over Xavier. <laughs> well, it's scary. the Fremantle thing right now scares me a little bit. You know, you're going to try to put him back in and defensively you're, you're going to get worse. You know that. You, yeah. I just think that Marquette matches up a little bit more um, with teams around the country. I like, I've but, said it for a while. I like Miami, man. I do. I like Miami. Those they've again, they've yeah, been. they've won six straight now. Uh, beat Wake today, they could score. And again, Wong, Pack, th- those are two guards that can make plays off mm-hmm. the bounce. Um, and Jim's been there, but listen, 